in ICU. So kidney disease is bad news. Let us focus on acute kidney injury. This is one of our review that will appear uh, in the current issue of the Journal of Vegetative Nephrology. And this is the mechanism. The mechanism of acute kidney injury in COVID patients, either direct viral cytopathic effect, and to be honest, this mechanism is debated nowadays, and I'm going to explain this in the pathology sector. The hemodynamic instability and the cytokine storm, and the third is hyper coagulability state and the micro thrombi in the kidney. This is one of the studies showing that kidney uh, may be the site of direct viral uh, affection. And this is another study from UK assessing histopathological finding and viral thrombism. And from the biopsy, there, uh, this autopsy, there was, uh, there was pancreatitis, pericarditis, adrenal microinfarcts, secondary disseminated mucoromycosis and the brain microglial activation and uh, acute kidney injury. This is, this is one of the studies that showed the hypothesis of ultra stru structural evidence for direct renal infection with SARS-CoV-2. This tolodum blue, and you can see here, isometric vacuolization of renal tubules, and this is the electromicroscope, and here the authors bought here this arrow to say this is viral particles, and this is the decorated and the spike. But be careful, because there is a, a, a great criticism for all these, because all these viral-like particles may be an artifact, just artifacts, or the biopsy is done while the virus is cleared from the kidney. So the, the presence of the viral within the kidney is debated. And this is one of the studies showing that COVID patient may, may be associated with proximal convoluted tubular dysfunction. Uh, so uh, SARS-CoV-2 may cause specific manifestation of proximal tubular dysfunction, including low molecular weight proteinuria, uh, neutral amino aciduria, and the defective handling of uric acid and the phosphate. And as you see here, they alleged that the virus may be present within the kidney. Again, this is the post-mortem biopsy that give row for the presence of virus. So this is acute tubular injury and red cell aggregate, electromicroscope, showing the virus in the podocyte, but again, there is debate for the presence of virus within the kidney. This is a six cases of uh, collapsing glomerulopathy in the patients. So six black patients with COVID, AKI and the proteinuria and the biopsy shows collapsing glomerulopathy. The mechanism was cytokine storm, and there was no evidence by all means that the virus invade the kidney. Uh, uh, don't uh, forget that this is uh, abuli protein alleles that increase the risk of collapsing in these patients. SARS-CoV-2 infection can trigger collapsing glomerulopathy in patients with two abuli protein risk alleles causing AKI and the nephrotic range of proteinuria in patients of African ancestry with COVID-19. This is a large uh, cohort. This is the four case series for biopsy, 17 biopsies. This is why uh, nowadays in the, in the past, we are afraid to do biopsy for COVID patients presented with renal manifestation. But I think we shouldn't do biopsy for all cases, but for patients with suspicious, with high grade proteinuria or suspicious etiology of immunological profile, I think biopsy can be done under uh, 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 the complete precautions. So 17 uh, patients, 14 native and three transplant, Kidney biopsies, the main reason of biopsy is AKI and the proteinuria in the majority of cases. You can see here acute tubular injury collapsing. This is a silver stain, collapsing variety, collapsing uh, glomerulopathy, and this, uh, this is uh, thrombotic microangiopathy. Uh, but again, in these 17 cases, no virus detected by AM or by immune histochemical staining. As I mentioned, this may be the two clearance of the virus or the virus doesn't affect the kidney and what was reported may be an artifact in the previous studies. This is just to show you the evolution of the cases and the timing of biopsy and the diagnosis and the use even of immune suppression in some of the cases. Uh, this is the, again, another 10 cases. 
uh, all of them, uh, this is the biopsy, all patients had varying degrees of ATN. Two have thrombotic macroangiopathy. One had myoglobin cast nephropathy. One had bossy immune crescentic. One had FSGS uh, uh, of collab and the collapse with fissures of collapsing glomerulopathy. All of them were negative for SARS-CoV-2 by immune histochemistry. And no viral particles identified via electron microscope. So this is uh, another data. Very interesting two cases. If you look here, this is a polarized light. I think it is very clear for oxalate. So this is acute oxalate nephropathy in two cases. And this, two, and this is the scanning electron microscope uh, photogram showing, uh, showing calcium oxalate within the renal tubules. Fantastic. Why? Because the patients were treated with high doses of vitamin C because vitamin C may have antioxidant effect. So be cautious because this may lead to uh, the problem of oxalate, secondary oxalosis. And this is the dose of the uh, vitamin C. The dose is given 50, 50 milligram per kg. The total gram 112 here and 160 here. Uh, and the end result is acute kidney injury because of oxalate nephropathy. What about the guidelines? The current guidelines, uh, and this is from July up to date, there are insufficient data for COVID patients to be treated by vitamin C. So the panel uh, recomm doesn't recommend either for or against the use of vitamin C. And whenever we use vitamin C, we should be cautious because it may end with this problem. This is regarding the pathology. What about the, the outcome? Does acute kidney injury bad, bad news in uh, coronavirus? This is one of the uh, studies, large number of patients. If you look here, this is the 89% of the patients uh, uh, who, uh, who uh, their state necessitated mechanical ventilation have a degree in a degree of acute kidney injury. So this is this is the bad news. Acute kidney injury is uh, a predictor for severe disease and for the need of mechanical ventilation. With the higher degree, you can expect the poorer the prognosis. And this is the situation. This is the expired mean death. This is the, the acute, if no acute kidney injury, the percentage of mortality is low, increases with acute kidney injury. And with the higher the degree of acute kidney injury, the higher the mortality. Another uh, report showing to the contrary to the first one, but it is limited number, the acute kidney injury occur only in 7%, but again, in hospital mortality, uh, this is overall, and this is for acute kidney injury. So acute kidney injury is associated with five-fold increase of mortality. Even in this report, acute kidney injury was not common. Another report from, uh, from New York City, approximately 4,000 hospitalized patients with COVID. AKI occurred in 46%, more than 1,800 patients had acute kidney injury. 19% uh, required dialysis, and how of them died in the hospital. Bad news. This is, I think this is the largest cohort of patients for AKI uh, complicating COVID or associated with COVID-19. Uh, this is the, uh, to show you the incidence of this, if there is no acute kidney injury, it's 10.8%. If AKI occurs, mortality increased to 31%. And if the patient needs dialysis, it increases to 37%. So acute kidney injury is bad news, especially if the patient needs dialysis. And you can see here the mortality. Mortality increases with acute kidney injury, like the previous cohort. I would like to fix this figure just to show you number of patients. 3,854 AKI associated with COVID. If the patient doesn't need dialysis, this is the majority, 80% of the patient. Even if the patient doesn't need dialysis, 46% died. And the percentage of surviving uh, persons need dialysis later on. For patients with acute kidney injury whose uh, status and uh, states dialysis, 7 to 9% died. So acute kidney injury is bad associated with mortality, and the risk of mortality increases with the need of dialysis. 
Is there in a biomarker that can predict acute kidney injury? I think this would be good news that we may predict acute kidney injury in our patients based on this soluble urokinase receptor in a COVID-related AKI. If, you will, if we look here to this figure, we have three tertiles, either low SOBAR, modest SOBAR, or high SOBAR in this ranges, as you see in, the, in this figure. Uh, low, low SOBAR is associated with lower risk of acute kidney injury. Acute kidney injury occur in this percentage, but high SOBAR is associated with more than 40% acute kidney injury. So SOBAR can predict occurrence of acute kidney in injury as you see in this figure. And if the on admission, if we measure SOBAR and we find SOBAR on the very low tertile, then we can predict the nature of creatinine after that. The creatinine will not be elevated. But if SOBAR is very high you, or modest, you can exhibit rise of creatinine in, during the hospital course. So SOBAR it, uh, can be associated with acute kidney injury if it is high. And more importantly, can predict the need for dialysis. So SOBAR predicts the diagnosis of acute kidney injury and the need for dialysis. How to treat acute kidney injury? From early beginning of this COVID, we learn to support the hemodynamic by given restrictive rather than liberal fluid, and the fluid needed are balanced crystalloid. The guidelines don't like excess sodium chloride to be careful, and we should be on the restrictive side to avoid any overload. Is there any new in the current guidelines? In the, these are the four critically ill patients. The guidelines and the panel recommends norepinephrine rather than dopamine as the first choice of vasopressor. For adults with COVID and refractory septic shock, we can add low dose steroid. So this is for hemodynamic support. And if the condition states dialysis, the panel recommends CRRT if available. And if CRRT is not available or not possible due to limited resources, the panel recommends prolonged intermittent renal replacement therapy rather than intermittent hemodialysis. So whenever we have dialysis or CRRT, we should be cautious about, uh, about clotting the filters and to individualize our management and to monitor the patient if we intensify anticoagulation. Because in this study, they found that even the use of cocktail citrate plus heparin is the best to avoid clotting of the fiber. Uh, but we should be careful about bleeding because the patient may, be, may bleed as well. Before reading this article, I consider ECMO as a futile treatment, no need for ECMO. But after reading this article that was done in 36 countries, 200 hospitals, treating 1,000 patients for ECMO. And this, this is the very nice study because uh, uh, this uh, study showed that 30% of patients may be cured by ECMO. So this is the discharge and the patient's fate and the mortality. So ECMO may help some patients. Uh, and the mortality, mortality is very high if uh, ECMO, uh, during the onset of ECMO, there is acute kidney injury. According to the guidelines uh, up to date, the, 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 the panel uh, is uh, waiting further evidence to support the ECMO. For pediatric patients, if we have acute kidney injury in pediatric patients, we should monitor urine output, assess fluid balance and renal function, correct any dehydration, but we shouldn't be liberal, use diuretics for fluid overload. And after that, if AKI persists, azotemia, fluid overload, electrolyte and acid imbalance uh, is established, initiate kidney replacement therapy through uh, CRRT. And this is the algorithm from pediatric side. If uh, CRRT is available, go ahead. If there is no CRRT, assist the hemodynamic state of the child. If the, he is fit, go ahead for intermittent. If he is not fit, we can start peritoneal dialysis or a SLED or persistent intermittent renal replacement therapy. 
if it's limited, this is how to uh, deal with the limitation either of machine or consumable uh, with this modality. This is in pediatric. And this is the, uh, the acute BD. So acute BD may be uh, a modality for the patients. So acute BD was successful providing patients with their dialysis needs at the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic in New York City. This is the, but the number is limited to 21 patients. Regarding maintenance,